Hello Booktube, it's Brecky from Brecky Writes, and this is Brecky Reads. In celebration of International Women's Day, I wanted to do a video that kind of overviews some of my favorite female authors and my favorite books by those female authors. Now I've read a lot of books in my lifetime and many, many of them have been by women, but some of those books have really stood out for me in my reading life. And I kind of want to highlight a few of them. One of the reasons that I want to talk about literacy on International Women's Day is that I have interned on two separate occasions with international development organizations. When I was an undergrad, I interned with CARE USA, and when I was in graduate school, I interned with International Relief and Development. And I actually lived in Cambodia for a while working on one of their maternal health programs. There is extensive research that shows that if women are educated and women gain a even basic level of literacy, they're able to earn more money and take better care of their families. This leads to more economic stability and better growth in developing nations. Educating women and girls means that girls delay the age of which they get married. Instead of getting married at 12, 13, or 14, they're getting married at 18, 19, 20. And that means that they are going to be healthier, they're more likely to have healthier babies, and they're more likely to have fewer babies so that they can take their more limited resources and really invest in their children, meaning that their children will likely live longer, healthier lives. Almost every specialist in international development tells you that if you want to see major changes in a community, educate the women. And so on International Women's Day, I want to talk about the ways in which we can celebrate the fact that if you're watching this and you're interested in books, it means that you're literate and you believe in literacy. All of these thoughts have really been swirling around for me because I am currently listening to the audiobook of I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai. Malala is from Pakistan, the Swat Valley region, and she's Pashtun. And this is her memoir about how it is that she became an advocate for women's education, the fact that she has a father who believes women's education, the fact that she believed in women's education so much that even though she received death threats from the Taliban, she continued to advocate and to continue to go to school while she was on her way to school that she was shot in the face and she's been unable to return to Pakistan ever since. Bal has won the Nobel Peace Prize for her efforts for women and girls education. This book has just hit such a chord because today is International Women's Day and the fact that we need an International Women's Day to remind ourselves, to remind the world that women are valuable, that women contribute to society, that women should be allowed to be literate and should be allowed to go to school. These are still things that women around the world are struggling with. Reading this on International Women's Day not only feels really appropriate, but it is a continual challenge for me to celebrate my literacy and celebrate my opportunities for education. All of that being said, women writers are important and the stories of women are important. And so today on International Women's Day, I want to celebrate a few of the women who have really, really impacted me as a reader, as a scholar, as a thinker, as a writer, and as a human being. Even Zora is the first person I want to mention. The vagina monologues were really, really important to me when I was in college. I saw this play performed by my fellow students when I was a freshman in college, and it was insanely powerful. As someone who was sexually assaulted as a freshman in college, hearing these women claim these words and not hide the things that happened to them, not hide their sexuality, not hide their life experiences, was moving and powerful. And this play taught me that I was not the only person who has ever gone through being assaulted. I was not the only person who has ever felt less than. I was not the only person struggling with so many of these things. To be able to say that, to be able to say vagina, which is so often considered a dirty word, and women's sexuality is often considered so sinful and dirty and wrong, this was really, really powerful and really, really moving for me as an 18-year-old coming into my own identity, coming into own my own experiences, and being able to say, yeah, Yes, I'm a woman, I have a vagina, there's nothing wrong with that, my sexuality isn't terrible, and to have someone else voice that before I had the words was really, really moving and meaningful. Another book and author that has meant a lot to me is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. I read this when I was 16, I was a junior in high school. This is the story of a young woman named Janie. She's African American, growing up in the segregated South, I believe in the 19. 30s, late 1920s, and she's forced to get married really young to a much older man. And this chronicles her life. It chronicles her coming of age, understanding her own sexuality, understanding her own place in a very segregated, both by race and gender, world. This novel is one of the most beautiful novels I have ever read. Zora Neale Hurston's command of language and her ability to weave metaphor and capture the speech patterns without feeling hokey is just marvelous. There's just so much beauty wrapped up in this, and this captures an experience that I can never fathom. I am not an African American woman, and I don't know what it's like to face segregation, and I don't know what it's like to be a woman who is not allowed simply by 
being the virtue of my race and my gender to do the things that I'm interested in doing. This book, Their Eyes Are Watching God, I cannot recommend enough. Another female author that I really think everyone should be reading and who writes broadly so there's lots of entryways into her literature is Margaret Atwood and in particular The Handmaid's Tale is a novel that made me realize just how dire the situation could become and that women's rights are not a guarantee and that women's rights aren't something that I should take for granted. The Handmaid's Tale is a future dystopian novel in which most of the upper class population are infertile and so handmaids are required to bear children. And the way in which this happens very very clearly parallels the biblical story of Abraham and Sarah in which Sarah, unable to conceive, gives him her handmaiden Hagar and literally holds Hagar in her arms while Abraham, you know, makes a baby. But then Hagar does become pregnant with Ishmael and Sarah is jealous and can't accept this child as her own and sends them away. Luckily Abraham remains faithful and Sarah becomes pregnant with Isaac. That is a biblical story that is used as the foundation for the futuristic dystopian society here in which unless you are an upper-class woman and they don't really have that many rights anyway you're a handmaiden and you're essentially like a fertility mule. The thing about this is that The Handmaid's Tale was published in 1986. I was born in 1986 and this is a commentary on women's reproductive rights and how perilously endangered they are. And 30 years later, women's reproductive rights are still perilously in danger, and it feels like even more so than 10 years ago or 15 years ago, The Handmaid's Tale makes sense. I think everybody should read The Handmaid's Tale. It's a great dystopian, it's creepy, and Margaret Atwood is just such a wonderful voice, and she just has so much to say about women and feminism and what's happening in our society and what's happening to our environment and where we could end up. I just think that this is a great book for everyone to read, and Margaret Margaret Atwood is a great author that we should all be reading. In my journey as a reader and as a feminist, one of the early authors that I read that kind of made me think about the ways in which regular everyday life can be full of meaning and can be full of women's empowerment was Jane Austen. So this is a bind up of just Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility and as you can tell I have had it a long time. One of the things I gained from reading Jane Austen as a teenager and then again in college was recognizing that everyday life, like not an extraordinary life of heroes and villains, not a life of political intrigue, an everyday life can have valor and meaning and that women can take a leading role in the everyday things beyond just are you keeping your kitchen clean and are you playing nice with the boys? Jane Austen was definitely a woman of her time and she probably didn't consider herself a feminist, although she never married and that was pretty radical at the time. But the fact that the women are the main characters of these stories, that these are sharp, insightful, often scathing commentary on the manners and the schemes of the age is just one of the things that reminded me that feminism isn't about going out there and tearing down patriarchy in big grand gestures, but that feminism is also about the way in which you conduct yourself on an everyday basis, the way in which you rise above seeing class or race as the most important factor in determining someone's value. She also talks about how the constraints put on women are ridiculous and if nothing else, Sense and Sensibility and Pride and Prejudice are really witty jabs at how redonkulous society is when it comes to the interrelationships between men and women and the kind of hoops that women in particular must go through in order to marry and how important it is for women to marry well. The commentary on the importance of marriage and the fact that like in Pride and Prejudice a major problem is that the women can't inherit otherwise they would have been okay is just such an important thing and again to see women being powerful in everyday roles not as superheroes not as princesses but just as the wives and mothers and daughters and sisters that we actually are was so powerful and has continued to shape me as a reader and as a writer and as a thinker. Okay, so some of you know that I am a religious person. I happen to identify as a Christian, but I wasn't raised in a religious tradition. And as I began to journey into choosing to be a religious person, I had a huge problem with patriarchy and the fact that religions are full of patriarchy. This book, The Red Tent, was a major milestone for me. This tells the story of Dinah who in the Bible is raped in the book of Genesis and in the course of her entire 
story, the story of it's all about her rape and the fact that her brothers avenge her, we never hear her voice, we never hear her speak. And so this is a novelization of that biblical story told from Dinah, told from her perspective and the perspective of the women. Not only is this a beautifully crafted book, but this was a way of helping me reimagine biblical stories and to remind myself that the patriarchal world of the Bible is not the world in which I live in and I believe not the world that God desires, but that's another video for another time. This is a book that for me at its heart is about giving women voice, particularly women who have not been allowed to have a voice throughout history. Dinah famously never has a voice throughout the biblical narrative and we never understand what happened to her and we never hear from her what she wants and what she desires. And this book seeks to tell that backstory in a beautiful, beautiful way. I think that this is a powerful book for women who are women of faith, particularly Christians and Jews. I think this grapples with the issues of patriarchy that are inherent in practically every religious tradition. On top of that, it's just a beautiful, beautiful novel. And I think this is a great book to remind us that just because someone doesn't have a voice, it does not mean that they're voiceless. Another writer that has shaped me as both a reader and a writer and a thinker is Toni Morrison. When I was in high school, I read The Song of Solomon and I read Sula, and both of these novels just shook me to the core. Toni Morrison's artistry and command of language is truly magnificent, and I have to say that particularly with Sula and the wrestling with the questions of what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong, and if someone has never taught those concepts, can they really be held accountable, moved me so much. I read it as a senior in high school and I've reread it again in college and I have somehow lost my copy, so that is why you're seeing the magical copy in the ether sphere here. I just think that Toni Morrison is one of the most incredible authors in American history. She's not afraid to address the hard issues, and she won't shy away from talking about the issues of race and gender and the intersection of those and how they affect women in particular in a society in which women are underappreciated. In Song of Solomon, the way that Solomon treats the women around him, his mother and his lover, is just so heartbreaking and yet that reflects the experience of so many women of color and I would never have understood that and certainly it was brought to life in a way that was almost magical in Toni Morrison's writing. The Blue Sword by Robin McKinley is not a feminist manifesto and it's not even the best book that's ever been written but this book was one of the first books I ever read as a young reader probably about 12 or 13 in which the main character was a girl doing rad stuff. So often in fantasy novels that I was reading as a child there were a gang of kids and there might be like one girl who tags along or the girl is the damsel in distress or the girl is the younger sister, but she wasn't the main character. It was always a boy who was the main character who was having adventures and doing all this cool stuff. And then I stumbled upon Robin McKinley's The Blue Sword and this book changed so much for me. It showed me that girls can be strong and they can be smart and they don't have to be beautiful. Harry Crew is not described as beautiful in this novel. She is described as too tall and her hands are too big and her hair is too yellow and she's just not a very pretty woman. This was so refreshing because it meant that a woman was valued for more than her look. She was valued because she was strong and she could hold herself well on a horse and she could learn to be a swordswoman and she had the backbone to stand up to a king. This book didn't shatter the literary world and this book didn't turn certain tropes on their head. We may not realize it now because there are so many YA novels in which the heroine is a butt-kicking female. That wasn't always the case and for me reading The Blue Sword was a huge shift away from male centric centered fantasy novels to female centered fantasy novels and it was just really awesome. Right, the last thing I want to talk about on this International Women's Day is the very first like graphic comic novel bind up thing that I've ever read and that I loved and I read it this morning and that's Lumberjanes. This is not going to change your world but this to me represents how far feminism has come and how far women have come in literature. You see that? Like different ethnicities represented, different sexual identities represented. I think there might be some gender fluidity in one of the characters. I have loved this representation because this to me is where feminism is going and where as a white woman I want to be a feminist. I want to be supporting women in all walks of life, particularly walks of life that I don't understand because of my skin color and because I came from a middle class family. And Lumberjanes is representing, I hope, a move in literature towards more diverse casts of characters, more diverse authors of literature, and just a greater awareness that diversity is a strength and not 
like a tokenistic side piece, but in fact is a main important part of the narratives that we share. These are my thoughts on women and literature on International Women's Day. I hope that you enjoyed this. This is a kind of spur of the moment video that I decided to make. And as someone who identifies as a feminist and as somebody who identifies as a reader and knows that women have shaped my reading life, I wanted to have a conversation. So who are some of the women that have shaped your reading life? Are there women or are there books that have really shaped you as you've become a reader? Are there books about women or by women that have opened your eyes to women's issues generally? Are there books that have transformed you as a reader or a writer or a thinker that were written by women? And in what ways are you celebrating your literacy? Particularly if you are a woman, how are you celebrating the fact that you have literacy, that you can be here on booktube listening to this video and thinking about books? How are you celebrating that? And what are some of the ways that we can work together to increase literacy and to help women who don't have access to literacy gain that access? Because that is something that I am passionate about, that is a huge part of why I love books so much. I just wanna be in, in conversation and to take a moment to celebrate literacy and to just be excited that I live in a world where I can talk at a camera about how much I love books and there is nothing wrong with that. I'm not gonna have any repercussions for loving books and loving literature. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.